Yes. Good. All right. Welcome, and uh, nice to see you all here. Thank you for coming out. Like we were saying, the weather is much nicer this week. So, and today is day two of the Wellness Challenge. Thank you to all of you for registering teams and participating. Some of your old faces have done it before. Maybe a few new faces. So that's great to see. So the lunch and learn this year is going to be some things are similar and some are different. First thing, being videotaped. It was brought to my attention last year, well, it's not really fair if I can't come at lunch and I don't get those points. So Kathy and I decided we we're going to try this. So hopefully it works. The idea is that team captains will get an email tomorrow and it will have the link on it. So then they can forward that on to team participants and then everybody has a chance to do not only the video, which is five points for watching the video or attending, but also there's going to be a couple of little worksheets and Kathy will go through that, some activities you can do for an extra five points. So welcome again. Um, if at any point you need to leave and go to the washroom, I would suggest you want to go through the back door, up the stairs, and just straight ahead. When you get to the top, there's a washroom there. Um, help yourself. You're here for lunch, so eat. You need to get up, do anything. And also, it is participation. I know Kathy's going to want that. Uh, she'll have some questions and things like that. And it's just an opportunity to share. The lunch and learns this year are a little bit more behind the why, and it's all around nutrition. Last year, we did one on sleep, physical activity, nutrition, and water. We found with the feedback that I got back, nutrition's the trickier one. Like we all get, okay, I'll drink six cups of water and we'll even sleep and physical activity a little more, but the nutrition, there's a lot of questions and why is it this way? So I'm gonna let uh, Kathy explain that. And thank you, Kathy's doing all four weeks. She is a registered dietitian with Cypress Health and uh, she's got lots of neat information that she's gonna share with us. So enjoy and I'll pass it over. Thank you, Val. So I have to. My trick is going to be for the poor people who are going to be watching the video is that I talk with my hands a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> hopefully I won't be too bad. But anyway, okay. So Val kind of talked about all the housekeeping stuff, so that's good. So the worksheets for this week are over on the side there for those of you that are here. Um, for people who aren't here, um, they will be sent to the team captain. So if you forget to pick one up, you'll still probably get an email with that attachment so that you can uh, complete those worksheets if you want. So as Val mentioned, this year we're going to focus more on reasons why we eat. So I think most people are familiar with Canada's Food Guide and what that entails, so kind of the what to eat. There's always questions and there's lots of information about it, but I think most people are fairly familiar with that kind of information and you do are able to get a copy of the food guide. Val has some here. Um, do they get sent out as well or not? There's just the link. So on oh, okay. the first information sheet, there's a link that you could download them or just, it's quite interactive. They're fun to go with your family and they can make their own food guides on there, which is kind of neat. Yeah, that's, that's always good. Oh, okay, so this first week we're going to look at some of the reasons why we eat. So different factors that affect what we eat. Next week we're going to talk more about whether you're a mindless eater or what I would call a mindful or competent eater. And then the week after that we're going to look at different types of hunger. And the last one is yes you can eat food you love. So just talking about ways to incorporate all those things. As a dietitian, I get a lot of people saying to me, yeah, I know, if I eat healthy, if I just eat the foods that don't taste good, I'll be eating healthily. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not right. So that will be the very last session. On the whiteboard here, I put some general headings. So these are all sort of general categories that um, have factors that affect what we're going to eat or why we eat. So biology, economics, physical factors, environmental, social, cultural, psychological, and our attitudes and knowledge about food. So think for a minute about these headings, and I'd like you to give me some ideas of things that you think would affect your eating, um, and we can fit them in under those categories. This is dinner. This was dinner. So where do you think that fits? Um, social. Yeah. And I hope you can read my handwriting. Okay. Any other? What are some other things? I'm a stress eater. Stress eater. Yeah. So where do you think that fits? Psychological. Out of boredom. Yes. Yeah, mm. 
Yeah. So stress, boredom. Okay. Any others? Friends. Friends, yeah. Little no, no, trends. Oh, trends. Fads, like. Oh, okay, yeah. So kind of the information that's out there, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And there's certainly lots. Nutrition has got to be one of the most wide topics on the internet. There's a lot of information and a lot of it is very conflicting, so it's also very confusing. Any others? How about biology? What affects, in terms of biology, well, what just affects? Hunger, obviously. Just hunger, yeah, yeah definitely. Any others under biology? Cravings. Cravings? Uh, yeah, that could go there, or it could go under a more of an emotional, psychological type eating as well. So I think I'll put it under psychological if that's okay. Yeah. Income. Income, so definitely economics. Yes. Yeah, I think so. That would fit under environmental. So when you, what, how do you eat differently in the different seasons? Well, it used to be whatever produce, fresh produce was available. Mm -hmm. Now you can eat it all year round, but it's probably not. Yeah. We eat more comfort food in the winter, at least I do. Yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> comfort foods in winter. Fresh fruits and vegetables in the summer growing season. Yeah, that's part of the economics as well because the price, I mean, yeah. you can still buy a lot of those things, but the price does go up. Definitely. Usually in the summer, it's less expensive. You know, you've got farmers markets or people have their own grow gardens and they grow their own things, so definitely. But yeah, in other seasons of the year, it's more expensive. Like, Right now, depending on the week, you know, you could pay ten dollars easily for like a head of cauliflower. You know, it's very expensive, so definitely that makes an impact. Time management or time. Yes, definitely. How much time you have? Where would that fit? Do you think? Maybe social. Maybe it's more social type of thing. <laughs> yeah, it could kind of fit under both, doesn't it? Because um, sometimes we think we don't have enough time, but if we take the time to do a little planning and stuff, then we do have the time and it helps us manage things better. So it could fit under kind of both. Okay. Illness mm -hmm. or disease. Yeah, so that would be biology. Yeah. How about physical things? What kind of physical things do you think? Well, if you're working, if you're working outside and you're doing a lot of heavy work, mm -hmm. then you probably eat more. If yeah. you're getting ready to go to the gym, you're going to eat less. Yeah. So more dependent on your activity levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, any others that people can think of? The weight maintenance or target to weight gain, uh, goals. Okay, so where would that fit? Maybe could be physical. Could be physical? Biology. Yeah, it could fit under there. So what do you want to call it? Weight management, weight status? Yeah, it could be either weight. Yeah, okay. With weight management, it could also fit under social, I think. Just because a lot of um, the reasons we want to manage our weight for different reasons are social as well as for health. So maybe fit it under there too. There's lots that would fit under social and cultural. I think mm -hmm. my own eating, like, 
you know, Christmas dinner is one example, but we have a society where you reward yourself by going out, it's Friday, it's been a long week, or your friends are going out, and usually it's around food. Just what everything that we do is around food. And you usually eat more when you're with a group of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Celebrations, yeah. Celebrations. So social activities or celebrations? So in terms of the environment, what about um, in our environment, there's lots of things we, uh, I don't know if anyone's heard the word, but lots of times they say we live in an obesogenic environment, meaning that the environment we live in is very conducive to being heavier. Um, so what other things are going to affect it, do you think, in the environment? The fact that all the fast food places will upsell you, like everybody mm -hmm. wants to upsell you, so that's a bit environmental. Yes, yeah. Well, just the number of fast food places, period, and then it's the whole supersized thing. Yeah, or, uh, you like fries with that, or yeah. Our sedentary lifestyle, like, you know, sitting in an office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's not food necessarily. Which are located. But it still affects kind of, you know, why you eat. Mm -hmm. Affects it a bit. So would you put that under environmental or more physical? Because sure. a lot of the work we do now, especially with uh, children, is looking at, you know, the screen time and being sedentary and that just being sedentary in and of itself, even if you are physically active the rest of the time is a detriment to health, so definitely a factor. Okay. Any other ones? Even just portion sizes at any restaurant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would be kind of under the environment. So with portion sizes, when it's sitting there in front of you, it's just that much easier to eat more, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're in a restaurant, and I guess I'm kind of cheap because I do it all the time, it's like, I paid for this, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> Even though I'm full, yeah. um, you know, I still will eat more. And that part of our biology, we do have, we do have a sense of fullness, but we don't often listen to it. You know, we tend to kind of, some people are really good at listening to their body and saying, okay, I'm full and I'll stop. But for many of us, we're not able to do that as well. We're used to eating a certain way and it kind of overrides what we um, are actually feeling physically, or we just don't notice the signs. Anyway, with environment, with like travel times being mm -hmm. there, like commuting or... Commuting yeah. Yeah, definitely. How far you are to the grocery store to get fresh. Mm-hmm. So travel time and then distance to grocery store. <laughs> we know like in the cities, um, usually the less, ex in, especially in the past 10 years or so, it's changed a lot. There's not the little corner stores that have or the mom and pop grocery stores, those stores are more convenience stores now, and so they're very expensive. So people who live kind of in that inner city don't have the means to get out to the wholesale club or the superstore where things are probably going to be less expensive. So definitely, kind of economics and that are definitely tied in together. Any other things that people have thought of? By the type of food that we choose to eat now. Mm -hmm. Affects even biology. Okay. Like the type of artificial food sources that we have affect biologically what we need to and what we need to do. Okay. So more like more processed foods. Yeah, processed foods and how that affects. Yeah. Food receptors. And stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of an environmental thing, but it can also affect our biology you know, adding all those different things, okay? Right? 
Any other? You guys have come up with a lot. So you can see from this that there's just a lot of different things that are going to influence our eating behaviors and kind of the foods that we choose. Um, we'll be talking about different things in the different sessions. So um, the biology and kind of the hunger and so on will be in the third session. More of the emotional and psychological stuff will be next week. And this week we're focusing a little bit more on the environmental aspects of, of why you eat and what you're going to eat. So what are some things you could do? Say, uh, does somebody want to prick something about one of these environmental factors that we've identified? Anything in particular? You have to meal plan, I guess, if you're looking at travel and distance to the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think if you meal plan as well, then you can sort of establish, you know, portion sizes and, and how much you need to have, and, and maybe you can control your portions a bit better that way, rather mm -hmm. than not buying, you know, that something that's quick and easy and yeah. not not well thought out. Yeah, exactly. So then, if you're planning things ahead of time, it controls your portion sizes and also what you're eating, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing you could do is if you if you do go to a restaurant and the portion sizes are generous, right off the bat, decide how much of that you're going to eat. Take the rest home. Yes. Or share, yeah. or share portions with someone else. I'm just going to put that here for a restaurant. So decide right from the start how much you're going to eat and yeah. put the rest aside. To share with a friend. What else could you do in a restaurant? Just ask for smaller portions, but ask for alternative sides. So. Mm -hmm. Or even just order like so the appetizer size or the senior size. Some of us qualify now. <laughs> <laughs> Often if you ask for it, they will give it to you anyway, even if you aren't a senior, but yeah. instead of fries. Yeah. Even just to hold the fries, you just don't want them. Okay, hold the fries. Salad or soup, maybe? Depending on the soup, but... What about these other ones? How about distance to grocery stores? Is there anything you can do about that? Meal plan again, I guess. So that, that so if you're... One trip. Yeah, rather than going every day, yeah. There are some good choices frozen, some good choices for frozen food that aren't terribly processed. Mm -hmm. you, know, so yeah. you can have some bad on hand in your pantry or your freezer. Yeah, exactly. Only make good choices. Yeah. Like one example of that is vegetables in the winter when the fresh ones are a little bit more expensive. The frozen ones are actually quite a good choice because they're usually flash frozen once they get to the factory and so they're maybe not quite the equivalent of the fresh but they are a pretty good choice. And they're usually less expensive in the winter time anyway. I guess more travel time versus the distance would be like using your slow cookers and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. For meal prep. Sorry, I didn't quite get all of that. Oh, I was just saying like your slow cookers or your mm. timers on your ovens or those types. Yeah, using that so that you're Again, part of the planning, right? Yeah. Oh, 
Hopefully I can read this later. <laughs> Whether other people can or not. Um, what about um, <clears throat> advertising in terms of what's in the environment? Does that affect how like does that affect what you decide to purchase when you're in the grocery store? Mm -hmm. And how does it? I think there's a lot of fear marketing mm -hmm. instead of positive marketing. So people are making choices based on based on, well, they're making choices based on the marketing, whether it's true or legitimate. Mm -hmm. Can it, does anyone want to share an example of, they were in the grocery store, and just the way it's advertised, you ended up buying more than you really wanted to? Mm -hmm. It was appealing. Mm -hmm. It was appealing. Four bags of chips is cheaper than three bags of chips. Yeah. <laughs> Double size. Yeah, yeah, oversized. Five groups of four, you get it for this price. Yeah. One, you get it on them. So, like, group pricing. Yeah. And what was the other one? It was how, just because it looks attractive, right? Yeah. It's at the end of the aisle. Mm hmm. <laughs> or you've seen it on TV and you just want to try it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I was in Costco on the weekend and they had these delicious coconut clusters. And they said, oh, they're great on yogurt or something. But I mean, I could have, if I'd have bought it, I'd have sat and ate the whole bag. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not as in a condiment, but just as a yeah. right? So, yeah, I had to walk yeah. that out. <laughs> so when they provide you with samples, yes. too, hey? Mm -hmm. So Costco is really big on that, but other yeah. stores do it yeah, as well. Do, mm -hmm. There's a lot of marketing to try to convince us that it's healthy to eat it, right? So if you have whole grain, high in fiber, I think this weekend we were talking about like the thin sations. They even put the word thin in there, thin sations. So you're tempted to go because you think